Hi. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I do. Okay, so before we start tonight, I just want to point out a few admin. Tonight, uh, the session is being recorded. And at the end of the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you may have regarding the exhibit. And there's a Q&A box on top of your Zoom screen. So if there's any questions during the session, please feel free to type in the uh, question and we'll um, try to answer it at the end of the session. Um, I'm Elisa Skilton and I'm one of the club members at the NYU Alumni Club in Hong Kong. And I'll be your moderator tonight. And I'm proud to present to you Professor Zhang Jin, Jing and Professor Barbara Edelstein, both clinical associate professors at the um, Professor of Arts at NYU, Shanghai. So they have just presented a joint exhibit with Allison Fine Arts in Hong Kong named Ineffable Garden. I had the, I had the privilege to take a, a video tour and would like to invite the alumni who have not been able to see it yet uh, to have the opportunity to see it now. So if we can put the video on. Okay, I'm sharing the screen with the video. Welcome to Alison Fine Arts in Affable Garden by Zhang Jianjun and Barbara Edelstein. For this exhibition, the Chinese ink painter Zhang Jianjun and American multimedia artist Barbara Edelstein have collaborated together to express their personal relationships with the natural world through a garden curated here in Allison Fine Arts. Jianjun's fascination with water is reflected in works from the Flowing Water series and Robin Rain series, as seen showcased here in the gallery. With his Ink Rock series, he further depicts his investigation into the integration of culture and nature and the deeper sense of time that acts as a medium between the two. Alongside, we see Barbara Edelstein's own exploration in complex membranes and structures of leaves and organic life. Using photography, ink, sculpture and 3D artworks, she translates her observations with a distinctive beauty. Okay. Did we lose Elisa? Great. Thank you so much. So would you like to start um, stories behind this dual solo? Um, the, our work is um, different from each other, but we share a focus on the unification of the world and express this desire in very unique ways with each other, different than each other. Um, the title, Ineffable Garden, becomes an expression of this unity of the world, but it is beyond language, beyond culture, and that's why we think this works very well together. Thank you. So Professor Edelstein, the way that you use multimedia artwork to explore the structures and forms of leaves are very interesting. We noticed your use of nature images, but not only in the aesthetic way, but in other works, not in this show. You have a dialogue between nature and social historical concerns. Would you share more stories about where these ideas uh, came from? Okay, I'm going to share with you a, a PPT, a PowerPoint, so you can see some of the images of my work, the ones in the show, and a few others. So I will share my screen, and there you go. So, Okay, 
Um, this is a quote from Gloria Orenstein that she wrote about one of the shows I've done, but it's about my work. It's like nature writing a poem to the viewer in its own language. And this captured so much of what my work is. It's about, it's very poetic, it's about nature, um, but it's in nature's language. It's not in our human words. Uh, so this is one of the pieces in the show. So these are works in the show. Um, these are drawings that I've done. It's uh, Chinese ink, it's photographs. They're all looking at these leaves, these lotus, um, but from the same eye, but a different way of looking. But looking at the structure, looking at the almost abstraction of them. Um, and I like when you look at a leaf, whether it's this leaf or these are duos that I show at the gallery, um, the leaf encompasses a tree, the tree encompasses a forest, and the forest becomes the world. By working with leaves, I'm actually working with a microcosm of the world, um, but it is the whole world. Uh, the it's a really a play between reality and imagination with poetry. So I'm focusing on leaves, but I'm really, this is a unifying of the world. And there's a few of them. So it's really looking at, looking at our world and the beauty of it. Um, and when we talk about nature as separate from humans, um, there's not that dichotomy. I don't feel that dichotomy. And it comes from, I mean, it's very Taoist. It's quite, um, I studied Zen Buddhism. I read about Taoism in high school. So there was that influence. Um, but this is very much trying, to, we've always trying to make us, Think about the viewer look at the world and notice it and then in a very ecological way not destroy it because if we appreciate something we won't destroy it and it's also just the beauty the poetic quality so these are individual drawings um, I'm really playing with the ink. The ink is a very, it's Chinese ink. It's a very particular Chinese ink. Um, and I love working with the ink. I've played with, I've used ink in my life. I mean, I've, I've always liked using ink more than other materials. So when I came to China, it was even very more natural. Um, so. And in using leaves from around the world, it's another way of unifying the world. These are leaves that Daphne chose for the show. It's not that I started doing this just recently. This is from 1991. I was a resident in a um, McDowell Art Colony in New Hampshire and I was doing these drawings of vines outside my window um, every day. Um, and again, it's a simplicity and it's a beauty of the line. And it's almost a calligraphic line. It's almost, Cao Shu is my favorite form of calligraphy. And it re relates very much to that. There's another one from that series. So these are also ink on watercolor paper. Another aspect of my work is installation. Uh, this is a piece I did at PS1 in New York, which is associated with MoMA at this time. It's a place where artists get a studio for a year and you're juried in. And this was an installation. So people walked into this and I called it Il Segreto Nascoso Soto Irami, <clears throat> The Secret Hidden Under the Trees. And 
in the next slide, you can see from the ends of the, the piping, the tree branches, uh, water was flowing. So it was very active um, and flowing into the pools. All of this metal is recycled. So it was another way of using recycled, re reusing material, but creating now from an industrial corrugated steel and piping, making it back into nature. And here you can see the water. And this is putting up another one of uh, the installations. And this is a piece I did. Um, it was installed in Santa Monica Mall in California, in LA. And it also had water and there was a companion piece. So this was being done at a factory. Um, this is a work that I did in Hangzhou in Westlake for the second Shihu International Sculpture Exhibition. When I do a site work, and I've done a number of them in China and in, in the world, um, I go to the place and I really look at what's there. I had been to Hangzhou before when they asked me to do, to come up with a piece for this. I remember the old gnarled trees around Westlake which I loved, and the willow trees. So I used that image to come up with something and I said, this has to be in the lake and it has to have flowing water. Um, so this is about three meters high. Yeah. And there it is on a less foggy day. This work is another one in China, a public work. This is in front of the VIP entrance of the Guangdong Museum of Art. And it's copper again, water. And when I was asked to do this work, uh, Jan Jun and I went to the museum and we walked around. And the image that was in my head was really the, the palm trees that are there but they were different than the palm trees I grew up with in LA. And this image stuck with me. So when I went back to work on it um, and play with this image, I came up with this work. And it's at this point is probably very green because it is copper in it, patinas, which is lovely. And this is a night view of it. This is a work that's um, in Jing'an International Sculpture Park. Um, it was installed in 2010. Uh, it's, it's quite active, it's there. It's about five meters high. And again, when I went to the park, there were vines and there were actually willow leaves. Um, so I took those images and I played with them. Um, it's copper, it's bronze, and of course water, and it's always, the water is always flowing. Water is very active in my work. It's a very active element um, in the public work and water is life. So, and it very much activates the sculpture, the place around it. Um, and it's lovely to use, but it's you know, with, the, with the sculptures. And here is giving you a sense of scale, a lovely little girl watching. Wow. Uh, this is an installation I did at the Himalaya Art Museum at their opening show. So there were three sculptures um, and you can see one was based on, was in connection in the same series as the outdoor one. I mean, you can see two of them. And then behind is a video, which is now playing at the gallery. Um, and it's of uh, the patterns of the shadows of branches on the old walls of the garden for lingering in, in Sujo. But it's just this very, it's part of a series I've been doing of things, shadows of trees and leaves moving in the wind. And when you think about it, that movement, wind is, is chi, is the energy of the world. And by, by recording 
the shadow movement of the wind, I'm actually recording chi. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are stills from the video. You see all different patterns, but it was all shot at the Lingering Garden. I don't know, what is the Chinese name? Xiyuan. Xiyuan. The Zen is a Zen garden. Zen garden. Mm. Here's another way I used that video with another work that was actually a bonsai that I um, had ink flowing from into a pool. So instead of water now, it's ink. Uh, using very, it became very Chinese. A bonsai to me is very Chinese. And it was, so this is not the shadow of the bonsai. This is the video, but showing, I showed it together at the Dolan Museum of Art two years ago. Here's another view. This is an installation I did um, at the Mingyuan Art Center. And it's, I, when I was asked to do a work in this, it was a huge space, it was um, 18 meters. I wanted to make something that, it's a Chinese landscape, it's a landscape, but it's moving. And these are ink drawings, each of the leaves on these branches are ink drawings but you can walk in this space. And when you walk in it, because everything is hanging by your movement, by the air that you're pushing, uh, the, the branches start moving. So you're actually walking into a Chinese ink landscape. Um, so it's my way of referring back to the Chinese tradition that I find here, but in my own contemporary way, my own way, um, the branches, I gave them new leaves, I gave them new life. Um, and it also becomes very calligraphic. Here's another view. And this is the last work that I'm going to show you today um, to talk about. Again, I used leaves, but this was called Immigrant Leaves. And I was invited to, to the show of women, it's at the Frauen Museum, the Women's Museum in Bonn, Germany. And it was women who, artists whose family had to immigrate or emigrate due to political situations. Um, my family were Jewish and uh, we left the family, my grandparents' generation left Poland and Russia, or some of them did not survive. Um, but it was the idea that I was talking about uh, the Jews around the world have a connection to each other. Jewish women have a connection to each other, even though we're spread all over the world. And I use the image of the leaf, the fig leaf, because that's in the Bible in Deuteronomy. And I said, oh wait, so here, and stepping stones because uh, you're walking, you're leaving. But here's some close-ups. So it's the positive or negative of the fig leaf. And you can see I used some Israeli matzah, but there's a Korean pillow and an African bag and a playbill from the Sisters Rosenzweig in New York. Um, money uh, from different countries, the, the movie Exodus, um, maps for money, for moving, um, because Jews have gone all around the world and have assimilated into their culture, but there's still something that there's some identity. And an Iranian newspaper. Oh, this is the last work. This is in the show. Uh, these works are in the show. Uh, the two side leaves are about half a meter wide. They're silicon rubber um, and stainless steel. And they're another way of util using the shape of leaves, which is this universal 
you know, it's all around the world. We find leaves and we find different, it's a differentiation, but they're all together. And then the wonderful color. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor Edelstein. That was fascinating. The installations are huge. They're, <laughs> some of them. Yes. Um, so I have a question also for Professor uh, Zhang. I know that you're rubbing rain flowing water and first drop of water series draw upon your fascination with water. And for almost all your career, your work focuses on nature and metaphysics. But you also work with human issues. For example, last year you had a show at the Royal Academy of Art in London titled Human Traces. What is the connection between that work and the works in this show? Um, can you share with us a little bit about uh, about them, please. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Um, so when I was in the 80s or uh, when I was young, I think the, uh, the Taoism and Zen strongly influenced and influential and in art. And um, in Taoism, nature and people never separate. It's unified as one. So even in my earlier career time and during the uh, 80s, beginning of the 80s, I started working on abstract paintings, metaphysics works, but also uh, there are some artworks uh, using human. But of course this human, not necessarily like that one portrait or one person or some story. It's, it's the overall, it's overall like a survey a human being. So that's you mentioned, the one uh, solo show I did last year in Royal Academy, it titled uh, The uh, Human Traces. But it's, again, it's about people. And later I can show you uh, some images here. Um, from my PBT here, I start uh, the Ink Rock, which is this piece showed at the uh, Alison Fine Art Gallery now. And so the rock, it's in Chinese tradition, the rock, it's a scholar rock, it's because uh, that's what we, what the people, how we understood how the relationship with nature. So that's, that's a mountain. So, uh, but this one, instead of directly I using the stone, but I transform, get into uh, the ink. So that's emphasized the cultural, uh, the sense. Um, because that, I want to show this one is uh, I did this installation in the Shanghai, the force of Shanghai Biennale, Shanghai Biennial in Shanghai Art Museum. So that one called uh, Ink Garden of a Recreation. And big ink rock and a few small. And also this uh, floor, I, I collect some uh, uh, old bricks uh, from the village to turn down this uh, the very old Ming Dynasty house and temple. I, I bought that and then making a garden and rock and then the old floor. And so this two, this one small rock in further, you will see uh, the sitting on top of uh, the tank with water. So the, the water, I set up the pump inside the sculpture. So the water speed out from uh, the sculpture, the ink rock, day by day, gradually melt this, uh, or change the shape of this uh, the sculpture. So in the beginning, the clear water, more gradually, the solid ink to the liquid and the slowly change. So whole idea is because uh, when I left the China in the later, uh, in, in later 80s, and then when I first time come back to visit, it's in between half of six years. So that's a big gap for me. It's a very strong visual impact because everything changing, old to new, west, east, traditional, modern. There's, a, there's sometimes during that time, not really transition smoothly, like crash together. I thought that's like, you know, uh, very interesting, fascinating that as artists, I want to see, I want to uh, deal with the, the moment and that's a really strong, I don't want to do it 
uh, artwork, like conceptual art, a lot of artists, conceptual art, just like put a note. I want to find a visual, visual image. So that's how I start, uh, did a lot of those work. That's the sketch for the, uh, for my installation. And of course, uh, you just mentioned water. Yeah, water, flowing water, and also uh, first drop water and the rubbing red. So water is really like, a, besides the, the, the elements for the, uh, the water, because also water is a very philosophical thoughts. And also most in interest is uh, the, uh, the transition. They always follow the, sh the surrounding change of the shape. That's uh, it's fascinating. So uh, that's, I got a lot of uh, inspiration and from, uh, from the beginning of my career. So um, again, I use an oil pen uh, and ink on rice paper or over the canvas. So that's how I start this technique uh, since mid of the 80s, 84, I think. Yeah, some of the, uh, uh, the water, flowing water series, and you will see that's a calligraphy and abstraction or, or, or realism at the same time. And that's one thing I, uh, very uh, obviously, I'm man, I deal with um, like eternal end of the moments and or poetic realism and the metaphysics. So that's the contrast. I thought that's like fascinating me because uh, uh, when I do this uh, Robin Wren, and then the rail, of course, you cannot physical to rub, but the rubbing, it's a very, uh, can be very poetic way to, to see that. So this one, uh, I did uh, 2011 in, uh, in LA, on the side of the beach, rubbing sun. So uh, I used tradition rubbing technique and there's a rice paper and of course the fishing line that can hold on the paper floating in the air and two sides of two of my uh, assistant hold on the pole. So I'm making Taobao, like very traditional Taobao. Instead, you know, if we went to Xi'an, we know that so they have the rubbing the, the stone. So, but instead of Taobao, different ink, I different water. So um, before the sun down, so I tracing and uh, rubbing the sun behind. So once the water got wet on the paper, so this, you see the pattern, the light, sunlight can throw with the paper. So like a, a process. And then about, about the 20 minutes, the sun down. And of course, when I stop and the water evaporate, the images disappeared gradually. So uh, but we know next day, sun gonna rise again. And we know human, we uh, involve, we still can leave a mark, some, uh, some uh, sentence. So that's again, I think my Taoism inference is there. And then, you know, that's why I, the title, I mean, in English I call performance, but in Chinese I say, uh, as human participant, human, we are part of it and very tiny. So at the same time, instead I did a rubbing sun, it's come and goes, but this one I using the tradition like a hammer. At first I collect a big stone and I like ancient artist chisel and on the stone. And then I put a rice paper, piece of rice paper over and then rub. So that's a, a rubbing sun, that's a, in traditional way or in the eternal way, the others come and go in. Uh, so that's the same concept, uh, rubbing rain series. Again, uh, it's Chinese ink, rice paper, oil pen on canvas. Yeah, those, uh, this uh, first drop of water series. And so, 
the first drop of water again can be tiny, can be a phenomenon big in the in in the uh, beginning of the universe. So that's again tiny and small and big. And um, philosophical, metaphysics, and also realism, the poetic realism, same time. So that's uh, some of the details. Yes, that's well. Okay. I want to uh, since I had to talk about uh, the the. Uh, the work how linked with my early work. This one I did in 1982 uh, called uh, Eternal Dialogues. And I used the nature material, some clay stone, and directly on canvas. And there's a two sample. People say the sun or moon or, uh, or whatever I can say the transition movement, but in the very childish, a way to draw depended on, on it because uh, that's kind of like the market from the human human beings uh, the uh, and of course um, uh, this one 20 years after 82 uh, yeah that's 82 84 this one 83 I put this uh, work with other my work showed at the uh, 83 experimental art exhibition in Fudan University, and also, of course, open half day be closed. And then I get criticized because, uh, say, um, my work is too bourgeois, but uh, I refuse to do self criticism because I say this is a Chinese tradition. Of course, they don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so after 20 years, of course, everything changed. So the museum reopened the show, and then uh, happened Art America reported uh, that exhibition. And so that's my first drop of water series, that which is in Alison Fun Arts uh, show now. And before we mention human being, and so this one is 1987, and I did a, a huge oil painting. This one only oil, oil on canvas human being with their club. So here, people, people from different ethnic, from the uh, West, from Chinese, and people standing uh, on the ground. But of course, people think that's a realism, but I thought that's also like a metaphysics way because you will see the light source are different. So we seem in the one place, but we somehow we all individually questioning or wondering and there's one object in further uh, the uh, horizontal and that's the uh, if you see clear there's a uh, one mark on this uh, object it's a uh, three five seven nine it's Rome structure it's time it's a uh, um, we always no matter uh, people uh, when we was young, was a little, I uh, look at the, the sky in the nighttime, night, and we see the stars, see some unknown, see the mysterious. And then those, uh, those feelings, I believe ten, people from 10,000 years ago or today, or even people in 10,000 years after, but we still survive, the same thing, same question, because uh, there's something beyond us. We can so that's, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, art magazine published this work in China at that time. And this one I did in last year in London. And so that's the human, be uh, the human traces. And again, here in London, I thought there's uh, so many people, people from so many different places like in New York. So I thought about this project, I want to I want to, I invite people or I've, I met the people in the street and or in the parties to invite the people to be part of my, this installation. And what I did, I want to create an archeologist site and the people portrait for people from different uh, background. And also I give people, all the participants, three questions for each, for each one and then record their, their voices. So their voices, it's a part of it. 
acquired the voices in, in this space. So the three question is, what is your happiest experience in your life? And second is, what is your saddest experience in your life? The very personal. The third one is, what do you want to say to people in 100 years in the future? So want to link from now what we face to the future. And so that's the uh, interesting, like people talking about their personal life and then, and also what it would, they want to talk to people in the future. And it's happened is, a, it's which is out of my control, but it's happened is that most people, a lot of people talk about uh, ecology. And so that's a, that's the way I was thinking. Maybe like a week, I try to use, try to set up the installation, bring people stay afar and looking down to survey, survey ourselves, survey our concern, what are we, where we came from, where we're going. And it's anything, we came from people from different, but any, any possible, we can share similarity something, some way. So, and after the show, during the show, this uh, generous uh, in London interviewed me, and then she said, "You ask people, you ask people what what do you what do you do? What do you want to say uh, to the people in a hundred years?" I say, "I said uh, fix fix the earth as beautiful as you speak before we move to Mars." So that's another water uh, uh, I caught chat as rock play with water. I did uh, installation performance and then there's a video, the video of water. Some images shot from uh, Suzhou Creek or London or uh, in Germany or in New York, many with different water line movement. And some water images from painting from a Chinese tradition, from a international painter, painting water. And during the time, I used the brush dip in the water to draw on the paper, which is I made the paper draw looks like an ink penny, but the water, once the water evaporates, the, ink, the, the, the line disappears. But the, the video always moving on with, uh, with uh, so this is the one on Wu Dai's water, the other is Van Gogh's water. Once the images show, I copy. The, the, the images it's with different style. But of course the video, sometimes the one minute, sometimes 20 seconds move. So I may change another line, but of course the, uh, when I draw the mark on left, so connected with the, the video. So the, always the water moving never had the same moment. So the water from nature, from, from a human together. So, uh, and I also, I also, oh, sorry, uh, I touched it too fast. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, okay, just the same thing. And there's an installation. Also, I invite one poet and one musician. So uh, we have improvised. And then I sometimes I draw a few lines and then one musician play not really a music, but a sound, or the, uh, the poet come up a word or sentence about the reflection about the nature or culture or how we walking into the, the garden, walking into the landscape. And this is a mountain, not just yellow mountain, not just Fu Chunjian, but that's a inc really covered because uh, uh, from a past to current, from east to west, it's our world, we, we, we walk through this. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Professor Zhang. Very fascinating how you combine everything and transfer it into a piece of art. Um, but how did you guys decide to choose Hong Kong and um, especially Alice in Fine Arts to exhibit um, your, your installations and, and artwork? And if you have any future exhibits coming up, please let us know as well. Sure, yeah. Of course, um, uh, Alice in Fine Art Gallery is always focused on the, the contemporary ink art and traditional contemporary ink art. And also 
more and more include uh, experimental ink art, which is a uh, fascinating. It's a, which is a cover. It's a it's a connected with Barbara's work, my work perfectly, and so that's we are very honored have those opportunity to show the gallery. And also, I want to say, since you you asked the question, uh, I have a long history a relationship with the fun Alison Fun Art Gallery because uh, Mrs. Kim, uh, uh, the founder from Alison Fun Arts, in 1987, uh, he, she came to Shanghai. She organized an exhibition uh, called uh, some translation of contemporary art from Shanghai. So include my work showed at the uh, Hong Kong Art Center. So after that, since then, uh, I have a very, very good uh, relationship experience with, uh, with the Alison Fauna Art Gallery and uh, with uh, Mrs. King and also uh, uh, oh, now yeah. Mrs. Daphne. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's some. Great. Some, yeah. oh, how it all comes in a full circle after all these years. Um, by the way, is Daphne able to introduce the gallery? Is she available to yep, introduce? I don't, know, I don't oh. know if you can see me. Yes, we can. Hi, Daphne. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for organizing this talk and, um, you know, the, doing the virtual tour of the exhibition. Um, yeah, so I guess the, just very briefly, the background of our gallery, we, we were established as um, uh, Zhang Junjun mentioned in, 19, in the 1980s and 1981 in Hong Kong. And at the time we were really one of the first um, galleries in Hong Kong. And um, Alice King, who he mentioned was my mother, uh, is my mother. Um, so she has really, you know, had a very pioneering spirit at that time to, to you know, had the foresight to really establish a, a gallery that focused on contemporary, or contemporary Chinese art. And, um, we, when, when the gallery first started, we, because China was not that open at the time, we focused on a lot of overseas Chinese artists, um, people such as uh, Wallace Ting, Zhao Wuqi, uh, Zhu Dechun, who kind of left China and the first generation, the first generation of artists who left China in the 1950s. Um, and then as China began to open up a little bit more, um, we organized this exhibition that JJ had just mentioned in 1987. Um, it was called The State of Transition, and it focused on, uh, I think there were maybe like close to 20 uh, Shanghai artists, um, and uh, Zhang Junjun was one of them. And uh, since then, we've continued to you know, keep in touch with him. We organized, um, another show, I think when it was actually our gallery's 30th anniversary um, with Asian Cultural Council, which is a nonprofit organization that gave um, uh, Zhang Junjun a grant to go to New York to be able to study and learn about um, his Western art. And uh, he ended up staying in New York um, after, after receiving that grant uh, to further his, his artistic career. Um, but in, I think it was two, 20, 2011 when we held this um, exhibition for our gallery's 30th anniversary, he was one of the artists that we kind of revisited and re-looked at and showcased um, in this exhibition. And then, you know, more recently, we again, we're, we're again working together. So like you said, it's kind of come full circle, which is, yeah. has been really nice. And our galleries kind of morphed into, I, I, you know, he was mentioning that we focus on Chinese contemporary ink and a lot of experimental ink. Um, so, you know, showing, being able to show Barbara and JJ's work together in this gallery is kind of like the perfect, perfect fit for us. So we're, we're really excited to be able to do that. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, thank you for actually uh, offering to host a private tour for the NYU alums um, next Tuesday, June 2nd from 6.30 uh, to 7.30. And there is going to be a limit um, to the number of participants that can uh, sign up for this. So for everyone that wants to RSVP, the information is on the slide uh, who you can email to to 
to attend this private tour. And we do have a few questions um, uh, that we have some time for. The first question is for Barbara, um, and it's from Felipe uh, De Lucio. And his question is, um, what would you say to people in 100 years, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope that we can all get along. I mean, we're all humans, and we're all creatures of this world, and we're all, we're all together. If we destroy the world, there's nothing for anyone, and any creature, and any plants, and anything. So I hope by then, we have worked out our differences and realized that it's one universe, it's one world. How, how about you, Professor Don? I know one of your installations was, uh, you know, uh, you asked your participants in, in that human traces. One of your uh, questions was also. Yeah, I, I did uh, answer to, uh, to the, the generals and, and what I said is, uh, fix the earth, our planet, fix as beautiful as it used to be before we moved to Mars. Yes, that's right. That's a very, very uh, good way to put it. Um, and I actually have a question for, for Barbara. How long did it take for you to build some of these humongous installations like the five meter one with that little girl next to it? The way you shot it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a conception of it going to the, you know, once I was asked and there was a conception of doing the model and then how, how, what was your question? How long? Or how long you build up? That how way. long? And then yeah. of course, China, so things take three, a lot three less. Months. So it took three months to do from a small model to uh -huh. uh, the, the leaf had we built in clay and then cast. Um, so it had to be life size, real size. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the vine ball, root ball. You used it like a, over 300 meters of, uh, of copper. The copper, pot. copper pot. Wow. So that was again a small model that then we yeah. worked on and built up, you know, mm -hmm. and to get all the, um, and then there was the installation. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, getting the, the waterworks. And it was lovely because we had, we set it there and when they were doing the installation, we blocked it for a while when they were building the pool and then we set it. And then when we got the water, we installed the water pump, we got everything connected and we filled it and it worked. And by then it's China and there's a big crowd and everyone cheered and- The neighbors, was, neighbors, neighbors, all the, the neighbors. neighbors. <laughs> wow. They saw it with water. Water, the and, the they, and they really came up to me and said, you know, this is our park. And this is, we love what you did. Because, you know, what if you put something in and they hate it, but this is their center. <laughs> um, so it was very gratifying. And I always get lovely, talk, even the guards remember me and they point out if I happen to visit, you know, if someone's looking at, oh, that's the artist and then, yeah. Oh, that's very sweet. And yeah. what would you say the hardest material you've worked with in terms of building these? I think, um, I love working with copper because it's actually, for a metal, it's soft. Mm -hmm. It's still very hard, but it's, it's softer and it has a wonderful patina. Casting bronze is to me more because it's not quite as direct. It's um, more, and then you have, and then there's patinas and it's, it's more complicated process. Um, but, and then, I mean, I've worked, the first piece I did was in corrugated steel. So mm -hmm. um, each one has its benefits and, ben and you know, more difficult parts. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, I love, there's something about, I was a dancer, and I think working in an, doing an environment or something that's big enough that it relates to us physically, mm -hmm. doing an installation, and that's why I love doing installations that you walk in. And, and when I'm doing them, it's actually, how does my body feel in this? Where do I put something that, is it a tight space? Is it an open space? Um, how, 
how it relates to us as a physical being um, is very much a part of it. So my dance background comes in very much um, when mm. I'm doing relation. When you're walking on, I put coal cinders on the floor, again, recycled materials from PS1, and it's your feet telling you something. I put corrugated metal on the floor, so it's your feet off balance and how that affects your body. So an installation and sculpture is very much a physical, it's not just your visual, but it's, and with the water, it's the sound. So it encompasses a lot of your senses. Interesting, very fascinating. So, you know, we are very glad this was extended because, you know, we tried to arrange a tour earlier uh, uh, in April, I think, or March, but then um, everything was <laughs> going on. So it's nice that um, Allison uh, Gallery has, has has extended this ex exhibition. So we're looking forward to the to the tour next Tuesday. Daphne, will you be there? Is she online? Yeah, yeah, she has to unmute. Yes, I, I will be here. So I look forward to welcoming. Okay, you. great, great. We look forward to um, um, seeing you and the beautiful artwork. Yeah, I look forward to sharing it with everybody. Thank you. Yeah, it's thank you so much. Me too. And, and thank you for everyone that that um, came to listen to this um, talk. Oh, I think. Yeah, thank you for organizing, uh, Shing, and putting everything together. Oh, by the way, there's one more question. If we uh, have um, for uh, Professor Zhang, where do you source your ink and paper, and do you ever make your own? Uh, the paper, of course, uh, I didn't make it my own, but I work with the paper uh, uh, maker. So I can ask, I want a particular, sometimes I want a very thin, very thin, but I need a strong because uh, my technique, some, when I painted the oil and back and I painted ink on, on rice paper, and then I mounted over oil pen. So that partially translucent, but partially, it's the layers. And then I painted sometimes, I painted again on this rice paper. So you will see that the oil and the ink somehow overlap, overlap. so mix. But otherwise, take, otherwise I cannot paint the ink over oil pen. So in that way, I special order, special order the, uh, the paper, or sometimes I need the paper uh, more sensible reflect to the ink, or sometimes I wanted the paper more uh, rough. And the ink, yes, I, I asked, also I went to the Anhui, this is a traditional ink uh, factory. So uh, there's some, the factory, the, the worker, they can make some special uh, technique for, for the artist. So mm -hmm. I, actually not only me, I'm, I believe many artists, many painters, they do, did, you know, have those relationships with the factories. Ah, very nice. Well, thank you again, Professor Zhang and Professor Edelstein. And for those of you who cannot attend the private tour, there will be, uh, the session is recorded. So we will be um, uh, putting the link onto the social media sites. And do you guys have a website or a way to um, contact you guys? Is there a website you guys have for your artwork? Yes, page that we've never done. Um, yeah, the last time a... I tried it was 2005. I tried to work on it and I never. Um, so we're very bad at, um, we don't have. Uh, we're dinosaurs. We're dinosaurs. <laughs> we don't have WeChat. We don't have Instagram. We don't but, have, we're dinosaurs. No, 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 we're not a guest. First of all, so we're, so we're just going to have to track. We we're not live. a guest, a contemporary tag. Of course, but uh, you know what we realize, everyone have 24 hours, and what is how you divide the time. So uh, as our, right. you know, there's a lot of physical because uh, we are, I mean, working and mostly we're working on ourselves, and, and unless sometimes need assistance for sculpture. Otherwise, uh, you know, that's need a layer by layer time, spend time. So research or painting. So uh, we spend most time in our pursuit. Yeah. So, so yeah. contact Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>
does have a website and it definitely has images and information in the biography of both um, Professor Elstein and Professor Zhang. So if anyone wants to find out more details, <laughs> our, our um, website link, it's www.allison, it's A-L-I-S-A-N dot com dot H-K. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the way to work. <laughs> oh, yes, we're. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. And we will catch you at, an, at another exhibit soon. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. -bye. bye.